Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental day in home brewing. Today I'm going to attempt to make a Bucks Fizz flavoured cider. So here are my key ingredients. Well it's cider so I need to begin with apple juice and I've got four litres of apple juice from concentrate which just contains apples. My Bucks Fizz flavour is coming from these sweets, Bucks Fizz flavoured sweets, and these contain, looking at the bottom, orange and sparkling wine flavoured boiled sweets, ingredients sugar, glucose, syrup, citric acid, flavouring colours and paprika. I can't see any harmful additives, so fingers crossed these will be okay. My yeast of choice today is Lalvin ICVD47. I'm adding a bit of pectolase, this might be a waste of time, but I'm hoping it might ease the haziness uh, that this will get, because uh, when you make wine from sweets, it's generally very hazy. This might help, and it might not. Let me know in the comments if I'm wasting my time. I've got a bit of yeast nutrient. I've got some spring water, because I need to begin by making some tea, and to that effect I've got two Earl Grey tea bags. I don't normally use Earl Grey tea bags, but these were freebies, so why not? It's not something I actually drink Earl Grey tea, so this is as good a use as any for them. These are Novus award-winning Earl Grey tea bags, oh yeah. They've actually got a lovely pungent smell, a little bit lemony actually. Anyway, in they go. I'm going to add some spring water, and I use spring water because the tap water in Leeds where I live is a bit chlorine -y. It's made my brews taste a bit funny before now. I'm making a tea so it imparts some tannins into the finished cider and tannins give it a nice bit of uh, mouthfeel and body and so forth. That cider bite. So I've used about a litre of spring water in there and now I need this to come to a simmer and for those tea bags to release their flavours. So gas on and heat on and lid on. I'll be back. So I'll just talk to you about Bucks Fizz for a second. First of all, I don't mean the 80s pop band, I mean the drink. So Bucks Fizz is kind of like a champagne and orange juice type drink, commonly had at weddings and Christmas Day and stuff like that. I didn't set out to make a Bucks Fizz flavoured cider. I happened to be in Barry's Bargain Superstore in concert a few weeks ago. And as I was walking through, I stumbled upon these and just thought, wow, that looks interesting. I love Barry's Bargain Superstar. I mention it a lot. I'm not being paid by them. I'm not being sponsored by them. It just makes me very happy when I go there because you never know what you're going to find. If you don't believe that it makes me really happy, see this photo. Anyway, Bucks Fizz Sweets. Let's hope it will be a winner. Well, I think we can consider the tea made. Steamy. Okay, so I'm just going to lift the tea bags out with a slotted spoon and I'm going to mash them with the back of a dessert spoon just to get all that goodness out of them. Might as well get maximum flavour. So my tea is now made. I'm going to add into it the Bucks Fizz Sweets. I don't know how well these are going to dissolve. I'm hoping that they'll dissolve quite well. Of course, as ever, the product needs to be quality tested. I'm getting the oranginess more than I am a Bucks Fizz flavour, I must admit. Very sweet though. Mm. Right. I don't know how well they'll dissolve, let's just wait and see what happens. I don't know how to put them all in at once, I'll just try a few at a time. I think I'll go with the few at a time approach, so I don't end up with a big lump in the middle of the pan. Okay, that's the story so far. Still got plenty to go. Let's see how these go. Okay, the sweeps seem to be breaking down without incident, they're definitely smaller. And obviously I'm saying sweets because I'm British. Candies to you Americans and lollies to you Australians. Are there any other words for them in the English language? Anyway, just to report, as you get into the centre of these sweets, there's more of an interesting flavour coming out of it. If you just told me to guess it, I would never have guessed books for these. But it's definitely something. I'm going to put the rest in because these have dissolved okay. Now they contain a lot of sugar. I won't need to add any extra sugar and it will increase the ABV of the finished cider. So once again it's time to play the waiting game. So I'll just leave these to dissolve and I'll come back to you when they have done. Okay. 
I think these have dissolved. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's nothing there in the pan. It just feels like a slightly thicker liquid. So I'm going to turn the heat off now and I'm just going to leave this to cool for an hour or so. Right, an hour's passed. What's in the pan has cooled down enough. So I'm now going to start putting the cider together. Here's my apple juice. It's going into my demijohn. I have to give it a good squeeze. I keep getting comments saying stab the bottom of the cart and it'll come out faster. Why rush something you enjoy? I like a good squeeze. It's nice. Anyway, just while I'm having a good squeeze, have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd really appreciate it. If you did, press the red subscribe button. You'll get notifications when I upload new films. I've also got a Facebook page for Moss Home and Garden. Again, if you could give that a like, it would be massively appreciated. And I'm going to add my third litre. And then I'm not going to add any more after this for the time being. Because I want to see how much liquid is in the pan. Because the liquid in the pan will have now expanded with the sweets that have got in there. It does smell really nice actually. So, fingers crossed it will give a good flavour. It, it won't be a clear cider, I don't think. They very rarely are when you put sweets in. Got a little bit more left in here, but I'm going to add some other ingredients first. So in goes a nice heaped teaspoonful of pectolase, followed by a nice heaped teaspoonful of yeast nutrient. I'll now put the rest of the Bucks Fizz tea in there to wash the funnel through. I don't mind overfilling this because if I do overfill it and it comes out of the airlock then I can just put a blow-off pipe in, it's no big deal. So yeah, I think I'm going to go for fullness. It doesn't always build a big crowd, and it's a very hit and miss thing. Right, so I've definitely overfilled it but I am going to pour some out to take the original gravity and that won't go back in. I'm just going to move this around so it mixes a little bit. I'm just going to carefully put 100ml into my hydrometer jar. So I've got my yeast, which is Lalvin ICV D47. I'm going for a medium dry flavour, which is why I've chosen this yeast. That's what I'm hoping I'll get anyway. So I'm going to pour this now. I'm going to do a teaspoonful and then another half a teaspoonful for good measure. And that's fine. Get that in. And I'm just going to give it a little stir around. Now this yeast will have a very good time in here. It's warm, there's a heck of a lot of sugar in there and there's nutrient. Everything a yeast needs. And I'm going to leave this for a little while now and we'll come back for a fermentation update once it begins but in the interim I need to take the original gravity now what I've poured in here is too warm, it needs to come down to 20, so I'm going to put this in the fridge for 15 minutes and then we'll do the original gravity. Okay, I've got my cider must cooled down to 20 degrees now, in goes the hydrometer. That's nice and buoyant, obviously a lot of sugar in those sweets. And I'm starting off on an original gravity of 1.074. 1074. Right, let's see what it tastes like. Wow, very sweet. Slightly passion fruit flavoured actually. Anyway, I've got my Demijohn labelled up. And I'll come back to you with an update once fermentation has begun. Catch you then. Okay, just an update 24 hours later. And as you can see that there is positive pressure in the airlock. The bubbling wild slow is happening. And I've definitely got a Krausen. Not a large Krausen. And this will definitely pick up. But everything seems to be going okay, so I'll give you an update in a few days' time. And just a four days later update to show you that fermentation is nice and strong and this is going very well. 
So the next film that you see from me will be when fermentation is over. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's my Books Fizz Cider bottling night. Let's have a look at it. Here it is. It's cloudy. It's cloudy as heck. But that's because of what I've put in it. I don't think it's going to clear. I've left it for a while. We've got a fair amount of uh, sedimenty stuff down here. It stopped fermenting largely after about four weeks. It's been in the fermenter for about six weeks now and it's time to get it bottled but there is some trubby stuff in it. I don't know if you can see these little bits of like smeggy stuff here and there's a bit of that floating round in there. So what I'm going to do before bottling it is I'm going to siphon it through uh, this filter into another vessel and then into the bottles. So let's get cracking. So out comes the bung. Let's have a soak. Oh, there it goes. Went everywhere. Right, this was definitely a good idea because I can already see bits in the filter. You definitely don't want to be chewing on your cider, do you? Oh no. Right, I'll give you an update when this bit's done. Okay, that's done. And let's have a look in the filter. Oh yeah, there's definitely some bits in there. So I'm now just going to swap my setup round a little bit. So I've got my bottles in the sink and in each bottle I'm going to add this much sugar. This represents about one and a half teaspoons of sugar. This is just standard caster sugar, household sugar. And the sugar I'm referring to as priming sugar. And it's called priming sugar because when the yeast which is left in that has a nibble on the sugar, it will cause a fractional fermentation which will prime the bottle or make the wine sparkling or the cider sparkling I should say because the yeast will eat the sugar, it will create a bit of alcohol, it will create CO2, the CO2 builds up pressure and boom, primed. Once again, the drama. And in we go. So the first lot I'm going to put into the hydrometer tube so I can work out what the final gravity is that allows me to work out the alcohol by volume. Smell wise, it smells like a kind of fruity dry cider. There's definitely more to it than apples. There's absolutely no way on this earth anybody would ever guess Buck's Fizz. But you know, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? But yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this one, as I'm always. So I'm just approaching the top of the first bottle and into the second. Lovely stuff. So I've chosen to use clear bottles on purpose because, in all honesty, I quite like that colour. I think it's nice. It would have been good if it did clear properly, but I didn't expect it to, given the fact that I'd put boiled sweets in there. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell me that process is over. So I've ended up with five and a half bottles and a little nifter for later. Right, let's get that hydrometer in. Always a good sign when it sinks. And it hasn't sank quite as low as what I expected. It's actually finished on 1.010. 1010. Interesting, that must have been because of the sweets that were in there. Possibly there's going to be some residual sweetness. Let's see. So let's work out the alcohol by volume. This started on an original gravity of 1.074. I deduct from that the final gravity of 1.010. That equals 0.064. Then multiply this by 131.25. 
which gives me a final ABV. Drum roll, please. 8.4%. Yes. So being a very uncouth Barnsley lad, I just thought I'd have a quick nift out this bottle. It has got a really nice roundness to the flavour from the sweets. It's medium dry, but with a soft round edge. I think after this has been conditioned for a month, it might be quite nice. So I need to get my bottles bunged. Here are my bungs, they've been in extremely hot water. It makes them softer and more malleable. And then it's a case of shaking off the excess water and then just pushing them into the bottle. It's much easier when the bungs are a bit softer. So I've got my bungs in place, but I now need to wash my bottles down. Just because they've got sticky residual on the outside. And nobody wants a sticky bottle. Now I've got my bungs in place on the bottle and I want them to stay on the bottle and in order to keep them on the bottle I need to use cages. So the cage is simply a metal attachment that goes over the top of the bung and then is twisted underneath the neck of the bottle and it locks the bung down tightly in place. So when the sugar is eaten by the yeast and when CO2 is made pressure will build up and what will happen is that bung will rise by maybe a millimeter or two and that will show me that carbonation has taken place now you don't need to see me do that for the rest of these i'll come back to you when that's done right the bottles are dried off and now ready for labeling i've got my labels made up in a very simple microsoft word template i just need to print these out Okay, I've printed the labels off. Unfortunately, I'm having a bit of a printer moment, but at least I know what it is. Um, and that's for something else. Obviously, apple wine. But yeah, looking at the books, this side of labels, they're only half printed, but I know what they are. So I'm just going to apply the labels as best I can. It's not always easy on the textured bottles, but these are such nice bottles that I want to keep them. It's just that the labels don't obviously fit in where the glass has been. Um, cut out and scored. Welcome to the conditioning room folks. Let's catch up with that cider. So I've just brought it upstairs after bottling and this is now where it's going to stand for the next month. So it's on some shelves which are kind of temperature controlled. I've got this little gadget just here which is a thermometer connected to a plug down there. When the temperature drops below 19.5, it turns the plug on. That turns the flat radiator on behind the shelves. And when it gets to 20.5, it turns it off. I've only just switched them on because everything else is conditioned that's on here. So it's on 15.7 and these shelves will, want, will now warm up. So I'll catch up with you in a month's time when it comes to opening and tasting. See you then, folks. Good evening from the kitchen, folks. It's my Books Fizz Cider Grand Opening Night. And yes, as ever, I'm quite excited about this one. So let's have a look at this bottle. Now look at the colour. This is interesting. Look how there is a patch of colour in the neck. Then a clear bit, as in colour, a clear bit, and then the colour starts again. It must be something to do with the dissolved sweets and the sugars and, and whatever's left in there, but it's an interesting effect anyway. So this has been conditioning for five weeks and it's been in the fridge for a few days. It's really nice and cold. Um, I'm hoping when I pour it, it's going to be clear. I'm hoping I'm going to get a sparkle, but above all, I want it to taste nice. If I can get two out of three of those things, I'm still going to be a happy chappy. So let's have a look. So first of all, I've got to remove the cage and the cage is feeling brittle like an old cage. Struggling with this one, so I'm going to use a little fork and as I twist it, pull it. Otherwise, it sometimes just loops over on itself. That's it, right. 
So cage out. Right, the moment of truth. Am I going to get a pop? Oh, that was a bit disappointing. Rubbish. Uh, can't really see any vapour. Am I going to get a sparkle? That'll be a festival glass. Oh, it's sparkling. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think we can agree that's a sparkler. So, smell wise, it smells nice and fruity. It doesn't smell dissimilar just to standard apple cider. But there is something else there. I'm not quite sure what, but you get something. It's not noticeable, as in you wouldn't be able to identify what it was. Now, in terms of flavour, it's fruity. It's medium to medium dry, somewhere in between, somewhere in that spectrum. It's quite pleasant. Now, if you said to me, you know, can you identify what that is? Would I ever guess it's Bucks Fizz Cider? Would I heck? No way, not a chance. But it tastes like quite a nice fruit cider. Certainly not unpleasant. And on a nice warm spring evening, something that'll be very nice in the garden. So cheers, folks. As always, it's been a pleasure, and I'll catch you on the next brew. <sighs> the film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.